In this video, I take a brief look at the history of performance management. I argue that performance feedback is a natural part of all goal-directed human activity and something that is fundamental to the human experience. Every organization has to be able to gauge how well individual members are doing at their job and how well the organization as a whole is performing. Responding to feedback is an essential adaptive mechanism of all biological and social systems. From single-celled organisms to human beings, from non-profit community associations to multinational organizations. Feedback from others and the environment is what allows a child to learn a language, an athlete to win an Olympic gold, an army to win a battle, and a CEO to lead a cutting edge business. Responding to feedback is the basis of human achievement from the basic to the extraordinary. Feedback is a fundamental way that individuals and organizations learn and grow, dropping unproductive behaviors and attitudes and aligning efforts with the goals that lead to individual and collective success. Over the course of human evolution, the brain has increased in size from about 500 cubic centimeters, comparable to the present day chimpanzee, to the present size of 1400 cubic centimeters, with the greatest increase occurring over the last million years, a relatively short time in evolutionary terms. Many evolutionary scientists believe that increased mental capacity is not directed as much at greater problem-solving abilities, but at interaction with other humans. The social brain theory says that there is a direct correlation in primates between the relative size of the brain and the size and complexity of the social group in which the animal lives. In other words, a good part of our cognitive firepower is used in interacting with other people needed to transact complex social behaviors. In this sense, performance management as a process for coordinating collective goal-directed activities is a fundamental aspect of human behavior. Of course, I am not suggesting that our far distant ancestors sat around doing performance appraisals. The present conception of performance management originates in the 20th century but I would argue some form of the process has always been a part of goal-directed behavior. Certainly, historical accounts of highly coordinated military and naval operations point to formal management structures to coordinate complex activities and the administration of rewards and punishments to ensure the desired performance. The same type of assessment and feedback can be found in historical records of civil administration and manufacturing since ancient times. One of the earliest recorded examples of formal performance management is from the third century Wei dynasty in China, known for its advancements in the creation of a civil service, which included an assessment called the nine rank system and even in the distant past, performance management garnered its share of criticism. The imperial raider seldom rates men according to their merits, but always according to his likes and dislikes, philosopher Sin Yu lamented. A more recent example of performance management comes from the landmark textile mill in Scotland in the 1800s. Owner Robert Owen, an early management innovator, attempted to raise the standard of goods workers produced. Own hung cubes color coded by quality and quantity of work produced above each machinist's workplace, intended to provide incentives for workers to do their best. The modern history of performance management traces back to the work of Frederick Taylor. With the transformation to an industrial economy in full swing, Taylor unleashed what was to be the first management revolution of the modern era. Taylor surmised that great increases in productivity could be realized by transferring the thought and decision-making part of jobs from employees to management. 
Taylor's scientific management entailed breaking down work into functions and tasks and discovering the most productive way to do each job. While scientific management did lead to significant increases in productivity, de-skilling and programming jobs often alienated workers, leading to reduced job satisfaction and to labor unrest. Eventually, other management models emerged as a counterforce to Taylorism. Psychologist Elton Mayo at Harvard Business School in the 1930s is credited with founding what became known as the Human Relations Movement in reaction to the mechanistic view of work of the scientific management model of Frederick Taylor. Feedback and mentoring became part of the management process in recognition of the idea that workers were human beings rather than components of a great industrial machine. The enshrinement of performance management as a standard part of HR was further strengthened with the growing influence of industrial organizational psychology after World War II. By the 1950s, performance management was a standard operating procedure. It was even enshrined in law in the US with the Performance Rating Act of 1950 that mandated the annual review of federal workers. Once established a standard procedure, performance management continued to evolve and adapt to changes in economic conditions and thinking in management and social science over time. For example, as organizations became more complex and multinational in the 1960s, performance management techniques became more sophisticated and more broadly applicable to managerial and technical jobs. In the 1980s, with the drive to increase product quality, performance management added quality dimensions and customer input. And in the 1990s, the trend was towards using forced distributions in performance ratings in an increasingly competitive environment. So the conclusion is that performance feedback is an enduring and necessary part of collective goal-directed behavior. It has always been a challenge for organizations, HR people, and the managers and employees involved. The question is how to do it in a way that is consistent with organizational goals and culture and workforce expectations. To learn about the current state of performance management, please watch Performance Management 2018, The Evolving Landscape. And to learn a lot more about performance management, please consider attending my two-day seminar, Designing an Effective Performance Management System, November 26th, 27th, 2018 at Royal Roads University.